All right, good morning, guys. We are playing today a little bit, uh, a couple of things. Had a question about the Atlas milling machine and the power feed on it. The gentleman's having problems with his, and I thought this was a good opportunity just to look at it because I didn't respond to him yesterday when I saw his question because I wanted to look at mine and make sure I knew what I was talking about. So we're going to go over and look at that. There's a couple of things here. We're playing with new camera system and changing our audio just a little bit. So this isn't much a test of anything else. We're shooting on a new camera. Let me know if it's better or worse. It's got to be better than what I've been shooting. Anyway, we'll go over and look at this milling machine. Um, power feed on it. Gentleman's having some problems with it jamming up. So he has to loosen the gibs up to make it work and it's, it's jamming up the gearbox. I don't really see if it's in fairly good condition. Internals are in fairly good condition. There's not really any way I can see as long as your spindle's turning, which means your belt's not slipping on the on the main spindle. There's no real way that I see that that power feed cannot be engaged properly um, if it's going along and just stalling out with gibs adjusted to where they normally would be. Why I would suspect something's broke in there. Um, Gib adjustments on these, you know, you got to bear in mind these machines are basically wore out when we get them. No matter, no matter what these sellers are telling you that it's, you know, lightly used, only been driven by grandma on Sundays and that type of thing. These machines have been around for a long time. They're going to show a lot of wear in them. So that's where I expect to see problems with gib adjustments because where it's been run for years, it's going to be worn there and on usually the outer extremities of those beds. Why that's where they're going to be tight on the gibs because they're not worn nearly as much as they are in the center of the beds. So anyway, I would expect, you know, gib adjustments always kind of iffy on these, but um, in good condition, they should run fine. You know, granted they're an old machine, they're a smaller light duty machine, but they do what they're intended to do. So um, uh, machines should not be bogging down. There's no way I can see that that, that um, power feed on the table is going to not function at least relatively properly. If once you engage it, it's going to move that table or else something's going to break or has already broken along the way. Um, so I'm expecting to see internal problems on this gentleman's mill. Uh, I've got an MFC, he said. So it, uh, in answer to his question, no, that's not normal for it not to want to move the table or to be jamming out. Like I say, if it's, unless it's belt slippage and your spindle's not turning at the same time, it's going to bog your spindle down. That's going to indicate belt slippage. Otherwise, if that spindle's turning the way it's supposed to, why that power feed's going to, when you engage it, it's going to be engaged too and it's going to function. So anyway, we'll just go over and quickly look at my machine. Don't know that we've, I don't know how our lighting's going to be or anything else. Looks a little bit dark here. Um, we can adjust the camera for right now. I'm going to let it set the way it is. Anyway, here's our power feed engagements. There's neutral. There's going to be, come on now. Oh, there's neutral. There we go. We've had it engaged both ways on the table already this morning. Um, spindle runs as long as the spindle's turning. It runs to a gear here at the back of the, on the outside of the headstock. That's what runs our gear train down here. It's all gear operated. Um, I don't know that we can really see anything in here. We can change our speeds. The standard gearbox. Once we engage it, we've got what we'll consider a forward reverse or a left and right, depending on how you want to look at it, and a neutral in the middle. It's going to turn our shaft down here and it's going to run our gearbox down underneath the edge of the table. Down, down here someplace. And then table kick out and all that good stuff. But anyway, we're just interested in movement of the table. So if your spindle's turning, it's a positive drive all the way down into the gearbox and into the table feed. So I would expect to see wear in the middle of the table, you know, down over, over here. You can't, you know, there again, I'm zoomed in. I'm too close, but, um, you expect to see wear in the table. It's going to be tighter on the ends, looser in the middle, but otherwise positive engagement all the way through. I don't see any way that it can not be turning unless something is broken and you could have stripped teeth in here any of that kind of thing. So anyway, um, there's way it runs.
So yeah, I've got real positive engagement. Everything turns the way it should and um, we're running good. So I would be looking for loose belt, something in there, um, you know, or something broke along the way, whether it's a retaining pin on a gear, whether it's gearbox gears, linkages, something along the way that's, that's still allowing it to spin when things are loose, but when you tighten it up, why things are not turning. So, um, should work. We've narrowed it down to the gearbox as being basically the problem. He showed me some, sent me a little short video of it yesterday, and he's got some wear in there. It's skipping pretty bad, so that's his pro. That's the problem with his mill. Whether it's uh, whether the shaft and the back of it from the drive shaft on the of the gear train is just wore enough in the housing itself that it's allowing it to wobble. If it can be possibly shimmed out there's you know without actually seeing the internals of that gearbox other than what i've seen from the front of it why it's hard for me to say exactly where it is but it's in the gearing in the gearbox and there's a combination of wear in the gears i think and probably also in the, the housing itself so i think he's got a mill that's been run quite a bit so anyway what i did today and i've just shot a little clip of it that i'll include here is uh, the internals of my gearbox running. I pulled the cover off of mine, so I've run it in forward reverse and several times. And, uh, you know, I'm gonna post this as much for him as everybody else so he can compare the movement he's got in his, in his gearbox compared to what's happening on mine. So anyway, hopefully you find it a little bit interesting. Comments, suggestions, leave them in the comments section for me below, guys. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch.